grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning for the Festival of the Reformation is taken from St. John chapter 8 with focus on the words of our Lord, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What is the point of the Lutheran Reformation? You will find this day many views of the Reformation celebrated throughout the land. And yet many still look at the day and miss point entirely. Let's look at a few of those ways. The Reformation frees us to get back to the Bible. Certainly sounds very pious, doesn't it? Kind of resonates with our American ears. We like freedom talk, after all. We like to hear about our nation freeing people from slavery. We like to hear about lost freedoms being restored. <clears throat> but that isn't the point of the Reformation. Freedom to get back to the Bible for many, maybe more than more in Luther's day than today, simply meant to believe whatever false teaching and silly notion anybody had who came up with something in the Bible. Luther couldn't have cared less about that kind of freedom. Freedom to believe false teachers like Harold Camping and others is hardly freedom. Here's another one. The Reformation is a day for us to celebrate our heritage as Lutherans. Now that certainly is what happens on Reformation. It can kind of serve as a cultural, cultural heritage day when we remember whatever each person thinks it means to be Lutheran. Sing some old favorites, go home like we really showed those Roman Catholics what's coming to them. This is also not what the Reformation was about. Luther never intended to cause controversy. He wanted to talk about Jesus. He wanted to show what is the gospel. It was the persecution of the truth that really forced Catholic churches to become known as Lutheran churches. And that leads us to my favorite. The Reformation is the birth of the Lutheran Church. Lutherans can certainly and easily become self-righteous if we believe that the Lutheran Church is the container of everyone who's going to go to heaven. That would be the height of arrogance on our part. And yet we often act this way by being callous toward other churches not caring about them or what they teach, and especially by refusing to point out that way if they or we have departed from the teachings of God's Word. Yet we confess every Sunday, I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. There is one church, not many. That one church is hidden just as faith is hidden, and yet it is revealed wherever God's word is preached in its truth and purity, and where the sacraments are administered as Christ has given them. So we rejoice wherever God's word is preached and the sacraments are given out, even if the flow of the gospel in that place is but a trickle. God has done great things through small words. So what then, dear friends, is the point of the Reformation? The point of the Reformation, quite simply, is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The point of the Reformation is that Jesus came to earth as one of us. He walked among us, he healed our diseases, he forgave our sins. He died on the cross, paying the penalty for your unbelief and mine. And in his resurrection from the dead, life and hope sprang up through the whole world. This message, this doctrine of the gospel is the central point of the Bible. It's 
what the Augsburg Confession says is the article on which the church stands or falls. Notice, though, that this is a doctrine, a teaching. Doctrine is what it's about. That's right. Doctrine. That's to be one of the most unpopular words you'll ever hear in English. When you hear a word like doctrine, it sounds old-fashioned, outdated, authoritarian. A word like doctrine brings to mind old men hiding in rooms and coming up with rules and ways to make being a Christian harder. But that is not true. Doctrine, you see, is another way of saying teaching. The heart of the Reformation, more than anything else, is about teaching. What teaching? What doctrine? It has to do with the doctrine of who <coughs> Jesus is and what he does for me and for you. For you see, the Bible is, is one doctrine, not many. We read in the book of Acts, for instance, how they described the life of the early church. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. What Luther, by God's grace, came to understand is that the scriptures are a seamless whole, one garment woven throughout. All the scriptures teach of Christ. You may remember when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to two disciples on the way to Emmaus. When they didn't recognize him and didn't get the story of his death and resurrection, St. Luke records for us, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This one garment of the Bible is Christ. Not just a cute, generic Jesus that you could buy at Walmart. Every doctrine, every teaching in the Bible is intimately connected with who Jesus is and what he does for sinners like you and me. Dying on the cross and rising again for forgiveness of mine. What this means is that when we learn about baptism, we're learning about the forgiveness of sins. When I learned about the Lord's Supper, even such hard to connect doctrines like closed communion, I'm learning about Jesus and the forgiveness of sin. The end of the world, creation, the work of the Holy Spirit, every teaching in the Bible is connected to God's work of forgiving your sins and bringing you into heaven to be with Him forever. There is only one doctrine, one teaching. And that is Christ for sinners like you and I. Yet, if there is a danger in the Lutheran Church today, it is this. We have forgotten this love of doctrine and teaching. We have forgotten that learning doctrine connects us to Jesus, strengthens our faith, draws us to his gifts of the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Sadly, we have so often forgotten our first love as Lutherans. We have bought into the lie that doctrine doesn't matter. Deeds, not creeds. All you have to do is look at our study of God's Word to see how quickly we forget the point of the Reformation. How many families hear God's Word together? On a regular basis, singing the hymns of the faith, and praying. How many families are willing to sacrifice time, money, soccer, basketball, football, whatever it may be, to make sure that their children come to the divine service, come to Sunday school, and learn the great story of God? How many neglect? Bible class have more important things to do than coming to church regularly and hearing God's Word. I bring this up on Reformation Day not to make you angry. No one likes self-examination. 
it can be painful and critical and frankly unpleasant. And yet that, dear friends, is precisely what Martin Luther sought to do when he posted the 95 Tennessee from the door to the Castle Church in Wittenberg 494 years ago tomorrow. Thesis 1 of those 95 theses began this way. When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Repentance means turning away from unbelief and turning to Christ and his mercy. It means turning away from ourselves and our wants, desires, and selfishness, turning toward God and his mercy and mercy. It means examination in the light of God's law and recognizing once again that only, our only hope lies in the wonderful mercy of Jesus Christ. The church always needs to be reformed. If we cannot see that, then we are like the man who seeks to pull the speck out of his brother's eye and yet cannot see the log sticking out of his own. God calls us to repentance this Reformation Day, and calls us to faith. For there, dear friends, lies your hope. For God does forgive your sins, all of them, from the greatest to the least. He forgives them all, and he says to you this day, I love you. I forgive you. I want you to be with me forever in heaven. That's the doctrine. That is the teaching that God gave to Martin Luther so many years ago, and that is the teaching that God longs to deliver to you this day. Thank God for teachers and doctors of the church like Luther and so many others. The light of the gospel of the forgiveness of sins continues to shine forth throughout the world. Despite our weaknesses and failings, God is merciful. That is the heart of the Reformation. That is what it means to be Lutheran. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting.